Hello and welcome back. In this episode, we're going to take a look at integrating ASP.NET Identity with our Identity Server. Now, Identity Server stores data such as clients, API resources, and API scopes, but it doesn't store user data. And that's where we can use the ASP.NET Identity Framework, because that allows us to store user data. And that will mean that we can then create applications which will log users in interactively and use that in order to gain uh, authorization to call our API. You'll recall at the moment we just have a console application that uses a client ID and a client secret non-interactively. So what we can do to integrate ASP.NET identity into our identity server is right click the identity server project, manage NuGet packages, and we're going to want to first of all install the ASP.NET Identity Integration Package for Identity Server, which is this one just here. If we click on the plus, we can install the Identity Server .ASP.NET Identity Package into our project. And next up, we're going to want to install the ASP.NET Identity Packages. There's the base package just here, ASP.NET Core .identity. We can add that package into our project. And we're also going to want to add the ASP.NET Core .identity .NC Framework Core NuGet package. And this is what will allow us to store the ASP.NET Identity user data in an NC Framework supported database. So we will install those packages. And you'll notice that we now have an identity server .ASP.NET Identity package and our two ASP.NET Core .identity packages, those two just to there. So what we can now do, now that we've installed those uh, few packages, is we can come into our data folder and we can right click, add a new class, and we're going to want to create an application DB context class. So I'm going to call this class, as I say, application DB context. And this is going to uh, extend the identity DB context, like so. And then I'm going to generate a couple of constructors which will call into the base constructor within the identity db context class, like so. Now you'll notice identity db context is using the default identity user here as its type parameter. However, if you wanted to, you can create a custom user class that extends from the default identity user. Out of the box, ASP.NET Identity stores you know, username, email address, and that sort of data. However, if you had custom data that you wanted to store for each user, then you could create a custom user entity and you could extend the identity user and then you would register it here in Identity DB context, passing in that custom user type as a type parameter. However, as I say, we're just using the default identity user so we don't need to specify any custom types on that identity DB context. So now that we've created that DB context, we can add a, a migration for it. So what we can do just before that migration is come into the startup class and we can say services.addDB context, like so. This is going to be our application DB context that we just created. And we already have this configured DB context uh, local function. So we can simply refer to that. And that will essentially configure the ASP.NET identity context to use the database referred to by default connection. And it will also uh, specify that our migrations are being stored in this assembly, this project, essentially. If you wanted to, you could store the user data in a separate database to the identity server data. However, I will keep them all in the same database for ease and simplicity. So what we can now do with this services.addDB context, if we come into a new terminal and CD into our identity server project, we can now run .NET EF migrations add initial ASP.NET identity application DB migration. That is the name that I've chosen, but you can choose any name that suits your requirements. We specify the context, application db context, and that's because we now have three 
database contexts, we have the two identity server DB contexts and our ASP.NET identity DB context. And we specify an output directory of data, migrations, ASP.NET identity. So if we now uh, run this command to add a migration, it will build the identity server project. And we can see that we get an exception because the DB context options passed must be a DB context options of type application DB context. Now this uh, will be thrown when registering multiple DB context types. So if you just have one database context, then this setup will work fine. But in our case, we have multiple database contexts. So if we open back up the application DB context class, and this DB context options should be of type application DB context. As I say, if you just have the one database context in your project, then you can get away without specifying that type explicitly. But because we have those three different database contexts, we need to explicitly specify the type of context on the DB context options, which is essentially what this error is uh, telling us. So if we now run that command again, it will rebuild the project. As you can see there, build started, build succeeded, and we have created the migration successfully. If we open up the migrations folder, you can see we have our identity server migrations that we previously created. And we also now have an initial ASP.NET identity DB migration, like so. So what we can do now, now that we have all of that configured, is we can finish setting up ASP.NET identity inside our startup class. So we can close the terminal for now. And inside here, we can say services dot add controllers with views to set up MVC. And we can then say services dot add, add identity like so. And this is going to use the default identity user. As I mentioned earlier, if you have a custom user class, that's another place where you would specify that custom user class instead. We also use the default identity role. Again, you can create a custom role if you need additional properties to be stored on that uh, role class. And we can then say add entity framework stores. And we can point it to our application DB context. And we can finally say add default token providers. So this will configure ASP.NET identity into our application. And in order to integrate it with identity server, we can say just beneath our add identity server, we can say add ASP.NET identity with that identity user type. Again, if you have a custom user type, then you would specify that custom type instead of the default identity user. Coming down now to the configure method, we can say app.use static files, app.use routing. We can then underneath use identity server say app.use authorization. And last but not least, app.use endpoints. And we can specify a builder callback that will say builder dot map default controller root like so. So as you can see there, that initializes uh, ASP.NET identity and identity server, and it also adds MVC support into our application, ready for the MVC views that we will be adding in just a little bit. So with this all configured in the startup and with our migration successfully created, we can now update the database with that migration. So we can CD into the identity server folder, and then we can run .NET EF database update, specifying a context of application DB context. So this will look for any migrations that are part of the application DB context, and it will update the database with those migrations. So if we run that command, it will start the build, and build succeeded, and we can see there that it has successfully uh, completed that command. So if we now open up our database on the right hand side and if we refresh it, you can see we now have our ASP.NET identity tables within our identity server database. So these will be the tables that will store user data, things like your usernames, email addresses, and also things like claims, which are the sort of properties 
for each user custom claims and that sort of thing. So that's created ASP.NET identity in our database, all well and good. And in our startup, we've added controllers with views for MVC support. We've added the database context for that application DB context. We've added ASP.NET identity and we've integrated ASP.NET identity with our identity server. So what we can do now, last but not least, is actually add some MVC UI into our application because at the moment we still don't have any controllers or views or anything like that. Now, rather helpfully, there is this identity server quick start UI for ASP.NET identity. And what we can do is we can uh, download this as a zip from the GitHub repository. And if we open up uh, this archive, you can see here we have a quick start views ww root. And what we're going to want to do is extract those folders into our identity server project. So what we can do is we can extract those uh, folders and we can right click identity server and we can uh, copy path and we can copy the absolute path to that project and back in our archive viewer we can say copy those uh, files to C repos identity server and then identity server which is the project if we hit OK we can see that it's extracted those and if we now give that a moment to refresh we can see we have our quick start folder views folder and www root folder now what will likely happen when you add these in for the first time is you'll probably get a few uh, red squiggles being thrown and you see that's because this is looking for a user here called application user however we just used the default identity user again if you had a custom user class this is where you would specify that type however we just use the a default identity a user type so we can come into external controller and do again much the same thing like so replacing that application user with identity user type again just find all of the usages wherever we're doing that and just make sure that you replace them all like so get rid of that import there and you can see that's now gotten rid of the red squiggles as I say, when you add this for the first time from the GitHub repository, it's likely that you might have a few errors here and there, that you'll just need to go in and just tidy up any sort of missing references and custom types, etc. So with that uh, UI now in place, we can uh, close the archive viewer there. And if we now run the identity server application like so, we can see here it's built, it's run, and we can see we now have a homepage for our identity server, like so. We can see here, welcome to identity server. We have a link here to our discovery document, which if I open that in a new tab, you can see this is our well-known OpenID configuration, our discovery endpoint. And we also have a link here to view the claims for our current session and a link here to view our grants. If we click on one of these, we can see it uh, takes us to a login page and at the moment, we don't have any users set up in ASP.NET Identity because we simply uh, created a blank table in our database. However, what we will do uh, next time is uh, create some uh, temporary sort of test users in that database. And we will then test that we're able to log in with those usernames and passwords and view the uh, claims and other data associated with those users. So as I say, in this episode, just to give a bit of a view of what we've done, we've added the relevant ASP.NET identity packages into our project. We've integrated ASP.NET identity with our identity server with this line just here. We've set up ASP.NET identity itself with our application DB context. Again, not forgetting in the application DB context to make sure you specify the DB context options type explicitly because we have those multiple DB contexts. We've also, on top of that, added uh, MVC support into our application with the services dot add controllers with views and also with the configure method app dot use static files to serve things like the static CSS and JavaScript. 
app.useRouting to configure routing to the different uh, controller endpoints, app.useAuthorization so that we can use things like the authorized attribute on our controllers, and finally we've mapped the default controller route in our application.use endpoints. So that is how you can go about integrating ASP.NET Identity with Identity Server, storing all of the data in our previously created database. I hope you found this useful. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.